just accept it. <laughs> Welcome to the new contingency. Mooper Shot 93 here with Pendragon E01. What's up? And we're gonna review that beautiful Battlefield 1. It's pretty dope. It's pretty it's fucking dope. Very dope for you people living under rocks. Uh, the game takes place in World War 1, which is something that many people wanted. And they've. As far as I know, it. the first game to do it too. Yeah, first game to do. Well, yeah, I'm aware of two. And they've executed it pretty damn well. At, at the very least, it's the very. Actually, that's not true. There have been a couple of games that have touched on World War I. Um, Brave Hearts. Is that what it's called? I don't know. It's, it's, an X, it's an Xbox One game. It's pretty fun. But that does World War I as well. But this is the first shooter, um, especially the first game to do it this way. And it's, it's pretty amazing. It is incredible, yeah. yeah. Um, to start off with, it, it looks great. Um, everything looks just fantastic. Yeah, yo, there's, I am a firm, firm believer in it's the little details that will bring out um, any, any type of story or any type of experience, really. And in this one, it's, they have so many little details in it, and it's incredible. Uh, for instance, if it... Many of the, the multiplayer maps and uh, the single player games will have uh, dynamic weather effects. So you'll be playing and all of a sudden it'll start raining. Then when you look on your gun, you'll see like pitter patter of rain and like rain beat up on the weapon. And if you slide through mud, mud will then coat your gun in your hands. And that's just a really neat little feature that makes the world seem uh, very much alive and dynamic. Much like the, uh, the maps of Battlefield as well. I, what I like is that it's it's pretty historically accurate. All the uniforms look like period uniforms. Um, obviously, yeah, any game's going to take artistic license, um, so there is some of that. But they look, it looks realistic. Like it looks like something that somebody would wear in combat. And you know, e even if it wasn't a uniform per se, um, soldiers do all sorts of shit to their uniform when they when they get out in the field. Like it's it's entirely plausible that some some soldier somewhere saw some militarily necessity shit <laughs> so he just like clamped a fucking steel plate to his helmet like that 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 kind of shit could definitely happen um but it all looks it lo all looks beautiful um like Upishad said um the details are amazing like each little button has like little little engravings, on, little it, engravings yeah. on it and shit and the coats are all trimmed and, and shit uh, yeah like uh, as far as um we're going on details and looks like customizing the game it's not as plentiful as the previous battlefields or other games you'll find, but the customization that's there is pretty, pretty solid. And uh, there's a few weapon skins that you can get through battle packs, which are things that you earn in the game, um, or you can buy. I think maybe with money. I don't know if they have microtransactions. I don't. I think they do. I think they if do. I recall correctly. But you can also scrap uh, duplicate weapon skins or weapon skins in general to get scrap. At which point you can buy battle packs to get these skins, and these skins again totally change the look of your, your gun um, with engravings and types of decals that are really just neat to look at um, with the, the dice engine that they have here. Frostbite engine. You know, the the only real thing we can talk about that's negative is the occasional clipping. Um, I saw mm -hmm. people swinging their, their shovels through walls and shit like that, yeah. which you see pretty much in any video game, especially one that's got as low of maps as these are but other than that it looks really great and yeah, I, I didn't see anything that really detracted from the unless experience. you searched the realms of reddit and you found the video of the dirigible and flames going down hit the airplane that shit is crazy spin and throw flames everywhere i actually had that happen to me one time on a map it looks really cool it's not even something that detracts from the experience it actually even makes the experience even better because you're like that just looks cool it looks like a thousand exploding suns it really does it's pretty it's pretty awesome but and and that goes i mean that's that's a glitch who could have seen that shit happen like yeah, oh it's gonna it's... bounce off a an airplane and do a somersault um but when you when it when that doesn't happen the dirigible just falls into the map that's horrifying and beautiful all at the, all at the same time it's, just this ball of fire falling to the ground and changing the map too it, it, yeah, it, it actually lays there for the entire match right yeah that's what I was saying with like how these maps feel alive is like and dynamic they change and shift like in every single war game ever known to man before this that I am aware of 
you threw a grenade, and it does like a little fucking fart stain of a black mark on the, on the ground. And now, when you throw a grenade, there's a crater that you can then jump into and take cover in. And that is so awesome. I'm never going to throw grenades the same way again because of the fart, fart stains. Stain. <laughs> I'm just creating little fart stains all over, this, all over the place. All right, so the the game's audio is amazing, amazing as well. The soundtrack is just fucking oh, magical. Orgasmic is the word. <laughs> um, it it's there's all sorts of like string instruments and intensity, and it it sounds. And then, and then just out beautiful. of nowhere, out of nowhere, this beautiful woman's voice just like rips through the orchestra, and it's just like it, you just want to sit there and listen to it. Which, when paired to the chaos that's going around, you know, in the game. It really has this weird juxtaposition, kind of war is wrong sort of theme going on, um, which really, it's it's just beautiful, like the, the beauty and the chaos, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, as as far as like actual sound effects go, it's it's on point as well. Um, uh, you want to talk about the different materials, like walking on the, the artillery and shit? Yeah, so they've, um, like I said, little details really bring a, a world to life. And, I mean, everything, like you're walking in mud, you hear like little suction steps, water, you know, splish splash, all that good stuff. Um, as I mentioned, when, you know, rain falls on the to your gun, you'll hear that little pitter-patter. Um, and it's so, it's very authentic yeah. feeling. And, uh, yeah, like uh, Pendragon mentioned, when uh, you walk on, like, you'll see near artillery positions, you'll see these shells that they, that, you know, during the war, they would shoot the shell, take it out, throw it on a pile, and they, they have piles of these throughout many different maps, and when you walk on them, you'll hear, like, these hollow little ting noises, and it sounds really, like, it, you know, they could have just made, like, a little crappy metal sound, but this sounds like you're walking on just piles of shells, and that's really cool. Battlefield's always been really good with that sound, and there, this is nothing short of what they're, they're the bar that they set for themselves. Um, and, and the other effect that I really love is doing operations. Every time you advance to the next point, all you guys start yelling and there's a whistling and it's like, charge! And it's, it's just fantastic. really sets the mood for the game. Yeah, and operations, um, moving on to I mean, what the kind of game entails for you, operations is a, is a new mode to Battlefield. And uh, what they're doing with this is they're picking out, uh, there's like three or four different battles, I think, major battles that happened in the war, or major scenarios uh, that you get to reenact. Um, and with it, if, say, like, the, it was British versus the German, and the Germans ended up winning in the game, but in reality, uh, the British ended, had won the war, of that battle, then it explains what that could have meant or entailed in reality. Uh, that had actually happened, and it's really it's really interesting to play that out and see, um, you know, how the how the battlefield was back then, and uh, what the situation would have been if that hadn't happened. Right, and it, it brings a whole lot of historical content that I think a lot of um, other games have been missing, especially World War II games. I don't feel I never felt like connected to history through playing those, but in this I kind of do because you're acting out an actual battle, and these could have potentially been real people. Um, and they, they actually do that at the very opening of the game. You play through people, and every time you die, a little name pops up with a, a date that you died. And yeah, it's, it's really nice. heart-wrenching. Um, and it, that the opening sequence ends on two, two uh, enemies with their guns on each other, and they just drop their guns, and they're just they're bowing their heads. And it's really, really dramatic and really heartbreaking. And like I mentioned before, the, the beauty you know, contrasts with the chaos all around them. It's really... Really, really hits you right in the feels. It does, yeah. If you let your guy down, it'll, it'll catch you there. With for like the other the modes that they have, so there's operations. That's the new one. Then you got the classic team deathmatch, deathmatch rush, conquest as per usual with Battlefield. But the one that's I think also new is called War Pigeons, and it's essentially like King of the Hill, only with like pigeons. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Stop acting like a pigeon. I shouldn't have to tell a grown ass man to stop acting like a pigeon. Oh my god! It's it's, it's really fun. Um, it's very fun. I I played it the, for the first time tonight, and it's I was expecting sort of a, basically like a themed team death match, but it's actually um, really threw me for a loop. It's kind of like a a one capture the flag sort of deal, but the flag moves. Yeah. 
And it's, it's, they shrink, so they'll basically shrink, cut off one part of the map to play in. Um, but since it's Battlefield, it's still a huge part of the map, even though they, they shrunk it down a whole lot. And it's very, it's, it's very intense, very high paced. Uh, and it is, it's, it's a good time. It fits in with the, the Battlefield structure, so it's, it's not, not something to be missed. Great, great. And, and like I mentioned, that historical combat, like, uh, excuse me, historical content thing, that, that really ties it in because Wool Pigeons weren't some, aren't something that we've had for a very, oh, very yeah. long time. Um, and, and, you know, while we're talking about the game modes and everything, the gameplay in this game is, is phenomenal. Um, the, the controls are really intuitive. Uh, if you've ever played a food spooch and shooter, you're going to be able to jump right into this and, and pick it up from the get go. Yeah, no no it's, problem. It's like any other Battlefield game. Any other shooter, you can just pick it up, get into it, and just roll with it. I mean, of course, there's the bullet trajectory. They still have that. The While we're talking about the weapons, um, you know, as we mentioned, there's plenty of customization. Um, there's not as much aesthetic customization available, but there's plenty of stuff to change up your, your gameplay. I was talking about early, because I generally play assault classes, because I'm more of a run straight into the, the enemy sort of player. Um, if you switch from the main assault rifle to, like, a trench gun, that completely changes the, the loadout and what, you, what you're going to do from more of a mid-range um, combatant to somebody who should be in the trenches and in a building. Um, and the same thing with the sniper and their loadouts. They've got all sorts of equipment. They've got flares that do all sorts of different things. They've got a little little sniper shield that they can put up and peek out of. Um, they've got mine or trip wires. That's what trip they've wires, got. Yeah. Trip wires and some other stuff. Um, as opposed to assault that's just got varying amounts of explosives. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely allows you to adapt adapt any class to your particular play style. Um, and the other thing I think they do really well is make the maps feel like they, they use the maps to make them feel like epic battles like the trenches mm -hmm. and put they, they push you into the enemy but they also have enough open spaces and enough ways to approach them that you don't feel like you're forced into anything but at the same time you can still get up into it yeah I would say they do a really good job with making the, the maps feel like linear enough to where you know where the objectives are you know where everything is but at the same time they can be dynamic uh, in terms of damage and holes that you can punch through to make it a surprise for anyone, whether it's the person making the hole or the person realizing that there's now a new formed hole right. where there was a wall they were resting up against. While we're talking about epic battles, um, the campaign apparently does this. Um, I haven't played too much of it yet, but Ubushot can shoot that with us. Oh yeah, the campaign, really good. The, the stories are short. Don't expect anything huge, which is something that... Uh, I found kind of, I wouldn't say detracting from it, I think that kind of takes away from the experience, but you'll, you'll end up meeting these characters and talking, or, you know, experiencing their, their adventure, and then like, you know, the story ends right when you start a connection right. with the character, but they're, they're very well told uh, stories for the, the ones that you've got. The very first one, which is kind of like the prologue, you end up being uh, one of the Harlem fighters, so one of the uh, the African American units that were basically the vanguard of World War One, they were just kind of put in the front lines, and you experience trench warfare, which is brutal. Then in the second story, you are um, a tank driver, punching through the German front lines. That gets pretty intense. And then the other stories, you're an airplane pilot, uh, you're an Italian soldier, you're a, a messenger runner in the front lines. And then in the final act, you're in Saudi Arabia with uh, Lawrence of Arabia as you're taking on uh, the Turks in their home turf. And it's it's very it's very well paced, very well done. Um, the, the voice acting is very good. The only major major thing that kind of I, I kind of hate, the AI, if you're not very smart, just can fodder really. Um, but it's really pretty. It is really good. And I think it's, it's a really good game. I think that's something that Battlefield has kind of come up short in the last few games with. Their campaigns, they're, they're well written, but they leave you wanting more. And the AI is generally not not every favorite great. Um, they're more used to introduce you to the game mechanics and get you into multiplayer, which is where pretty much all of the loop of play value comes from. But other than that, I mean, great, like you said, great stories. They seem to be very well written. Um, and very well thought out, and you know, this really brings you, um, brings World War One, which is something that's not, I don't think, really talked about anymore. Such a traumatic time in 
the entire world's history that has been brought back to mainstream media through this, which is which is really awesome. Overall, dope game. Fucking dope. It's a, it's a dope game. You if you if you have really kick ass uh, headphones and you just turn those babies up and let yourself get immersed in the experience, you will you'll you'll be one of those players who's shifting in their seat making hand gestures towards the objective because you're just getting so into it because they have so much detail to immerse you and make you forget about just the experience you're in right now or the, the life you're in right now and the experience you're you're going through it's incredible so what would you rate this game Uber Shot? um i would you know, honestly i'd give it a solid five i would i would give it four and a half because campaign is really important to me and you know, like like I said, the last few battlefields have kind of let us down a little bit. They're not bad, but they they could definitely be better. I'm not whisked away on this opportunity like I want to be. So four and a half. That's solid. So I think the new contingency has given this a four point seven five. That well, math yeah, is correct. Four point seven. Four point four point seven five for this game. Really, really awesome. I definitely recommend you check it out. Do you like war? Do you like shooters? If you want to change the pace from all this future warfare, modern warfare shenanigans, do it. You'll you'll instantly love it. Well, that's all we got for today. Thanks again for watching. Um, if you liked what you heard, give us a like. If you want to hear more of it, feel free to subscribe. Um, as always, you can follow us on Twitter. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any thoughts or on anything we said, or if you just want to start a com conversation, or just say hi, or call us dickbags. You can call us dickbags. Don't call us dickbags. All right. Well. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Toodles.